If you've got a fairly small and simple business that you'd like to do the bookkeeping for without having to spend money on software like QuickBooks or Xero, you might like to try our free bookkeeping spreadsheet template. All you need to do is click on one of the links in the description below to download the template you want, and then watch the rest of this video for instructions on how to use it. There's links to both Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets versions of the template, and you can also choose whether you want the US date format or the international date format. So there's separate links for each one of those options. Okay, so I'll take you for a little tour of how the template works now. I'll use the Excel version, but the Google Sheets version works just the same way, so you can watch this video no matter which version you want. Okay, let's go into Excel now and see how it works. Okay, I've got the Microsoft Excel version of the spreadsheet open, and I'll just take you for a little tour so you know how to use it. First of all, you can see it's laid out with three tabs. So there's the Settings tab down the bottom there, and then there's the Transactions tab, and then there's the Reports tab. So we'll just start off over here in the Settings tab, and I'll just show you that what you do is you put your information into the yellow cells, and that goes for the Transactions tab as well, just into the yellow cells. So you can start off by putting your business name in there, and when you put it in, it will show up at the top of the report over here. And it's the same thing for the report name. So some people like to call it the profit and loss report. Some people like income statement. So you can just choose which one you want over there. And that will flow through over here um, up the top there. And then finally, you've got your date range over here as well. So I've got a date range in there for one financial year in Australia. And then that date range will flow in to the top here. But the date range is also important because there's some error checking over here in the transactions page that I'll show you a bit later that will help you to not enter dates that are outside of the date range. It will actually alert you if you try to do that. So make sure you get that date range right as well. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is you've got these category types and category names over here. And this is how you categorize your transactions. And they are over here in your income statement. So for example, you've got trading income at the top there and we've got sales revenue and then refunds to customers. So over here, there's three places that you can put trading income category names over here. There's the sales revenue and the refunds to customers and whatever you put in there in the yellow cells, that's what will show up over here. And it's the same thing for your cost of sales and it's the same thing for your expenses. And if we scroll down, it's also the same thing for other income and also taxes paid. So if I just go back over to the settings tab, you can see I've got those set up as category types over here. And then also, because sometimes you spend money on things that aren't uh, for your profit and loss report, their capital purchases, such as buying a motor vehicle or some computer hardware or something like that. I've just got this capital purchases report over here that you can use as well. And if we go to settings, you can see that you've got five places down there to put category names for your capital purchases. And just over here, there's also instructions just telling you to enter the information that I put in. And it also tells you how many category names over here that you've got for each category type, just to help you out a bit over there. Okay, so that's how these category names flow through over here to your report. So you've got full control over what you wanna call your different category names for your transactions. The next thing you need to do is actually put your transactions in. If I scroll to the top, I've got a bit of instruction over here. So you've got 1000 lines to put transactions in. So you've got a lot. You can see that that just goes on and on down there like that, up to a thousand transaction lines. The date that you put in must be within the date range on the settings tab, as I said before. So that's the date range over there. And then the description can be anything you like. The amounts must be positive numbers. So don't put your expenses in as negatives, put them in as positives. And then you need to choose a category name for each line. So you can see over here, each line, when you go to choose your category name, a little drop down box comes up. And that drop down box comes from here. It's all the category names over here. Okay, so. The best thing to do right now would be for me to actually 
just do an example for you. So what I'll do is we'll come back over to settings and I'll just create a category name that's an expense type and I'll just call it legal fees and we'll see what happens to it. So if we come over to reports and scroll down to where we've got all our expense categories over here, you can see legal fees has come through now and there's no transactions in there yet. So that's how that works. Whatever you type in over here, you can change these if you like. These are just in here. For examples, you can just put whatever you like in there. You don't need to keep those in there. And then they flow through over here and they're ready for you to put your transactions in. So let's put a transaction in. So we'll come over here. I'll just scroll down a bit and I'll just type in a date and I'll just put the description in and then an amount. Okay, and you can see when I put the amount in, this little box has come up red and we've got this error message up here that says that there's an amount somewhere down there that has no category name. And the little red box here helps you find where that is. So when you've got up to a thousand lines here, these little red boxes over here, here and here will help you to find where these error messages are coming from. This one in particular is because we've put an amount in there and we don't have a category name. So let's go and choose a category name. So we want it to be our new one, legal fees like that. You can see the error message is gone. It's $200. And if we come over to reports, you can see that's flowed through there to legal fees. Okay, so that's how it works. That's how you can put in a category name, put in a transaction, and then it flows through to your report. And that goes for everything. That's not just expenses, that's everything on here. Okay, so one final thing that I want to show you. You did see one error message come up. I'll just show you a few others. So if you type in a date that's outside of the date range, so if I put that in the next year, you can see we get a little date out of range error message up here. So when you get the error message, you just need to scroll down through your transactions and find any of these little red boxes and that will show you where the error actually is. So for example, if we had another one, you can see we've still got the error message at the top. And what we would do is we would scroll down here and see that these two need to be fixed. So I'll just fix those like that. And then the error message is gone. Okay. And the last error message I wanted to show you is what happens if we actually rename a category name over here? So if I call that legal costs instead, like that, come over here. So you can see that this doesn't automatically change over here to legal costs. So if you change a category name, you've got to go through and you've got to find all of your transactions and you've got to choose the right one again. So we'd come down here and say legal costs. And you can see the error message is gone now and that's come through over here as legal costs. So that's why it's a good idea to make sure you've got these set up first and named correctly before you go and put a whole bunch of transactions in over here. Okay. And then once you've got all your transactions in, you'll see you've got a nice income statement or profit and loss report over here. So it'll show you your gross profit, which is your trading income minus your cost of sales and then you subtract expenses to get to your operating profit down here. And then there's a spot for other income that's not your trading income. So if you've got some interest income or something like that, dividend income, you can put that in here. And then you've got taxes paid down here and your profit and loss after tax. And you've also got your profit and loss before tax there. Okay, and like I said earlier on, you've also got a little capital purchases report over here for things that you spend money on that are not for your income statement, things like motor vehicles or computers, etc. So that's it for the tour of the template. And like I said earlier, you can go ahead and download whichever version you like without having to sign up to a mailing list or anything like that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.